boxing in our corners, or our ends, sorry, we've got these filler pieces that are the same thickness as the wall itself. And we'll slide them in so it's just inside of both form panels. And I can tack them in with some six penny nails just so they stay where they need to be. Um, ultimately, the force of the concrete will push it up against the forms more than adequately, uh, especially with even just a four foot high wall. We're going to get around, um, let's see, about 600 pounds per square foot down in this lowest vertical foot of form. So just in an eight inch piece here, eight inch wide rip, there's the equivalent of about, oh, what would that be? Uh, two thirds is 600, so about 450 pounds of force approximately pushing against the forms right here. It drops down to uh, about <laughs> 450 pounds per square foot up here, about 300 pounds per square foot here, and about 150 pounds per square foot of force on our forms. So if you were to pour this or place the concrete in this form all the way up four foot high as just a really fast continuous pour so all of the concrete is still liquid or fluid, um, you have a lot of force on your forms. So you start getting into an eight foot, 10 foot high wall like a basement, that's where you start timing your placement so you do lifts or the four feet let it sit for a little bit do the next four feet let it sit a little bit making sure that your interaction between your first lift and your second lift are still plastic and fluid enough that they can be vibrated and intermingled so you don't get a cold joint there but that being said we'll tack this in we'll put some cross pieces here just to back it up and make sure that our form doesn't blow out Nothing worse than building forms and watching the concrete flow out the side as it explodes and rips apart.
So that's one way of nailing the end stop pour it in um, but we do have a different way of doing it that might be a little bit cooler so give me a minute I'll get that out so like I said we can do it manually with 16 penny nails um, throw some clamps on there get the board where you need it tap it tight so it works um, I think too many carpenters out there today are scared of using clamps for some reason they come in super handy whether you're doing concrete form work uh, standard wood framing or pretty much anything so don't be afraid to grab a clamp and throw it on there every now and again like for this we want to make sure that the end of our wall stays where it's supposed to be we don't want it eight and a quarter inches or eight and an eighth or eight and a half we want it eight inches so if it means having a bar clamp and just tightening it up where it needs to be do it so as far as nailing with a hammer the biggest issue that I have is that the vibration, no matter how good your formwork is, the vibration is going to loosen up your wedges, your John brackets, anything like that. Um, unless it's some kind of screwed in bracket where you've got a nail hole that, um, like a nut or something like that, or a wedge where you've got a nail hole in it and you've actually installed a nail to keep it in place, all that stuff's going to loosen up. So we're going to try out this guy here. This is a nail gun, um, Nail Pro. I think the company itself is actually Jacko or Jaco. I'll, I'll get it right and um, I'll do a review on this a little bit here. But uh, it fires 16 penny and 8 penny duplex headed nails and it also fires regular round head conventional framing nails. So it does a couple different purposes. The big issue with these, and I've never used this one, the first nail I fire will be the first one you see. Um, I've never used one, but I have heard from some of our carpenter foremen that the big issue is with a nail gun and formwork, you're supposed to pull all those nails. That's the purpose of having to duplex head. You go crazy and you start putting nails all over the place and now you have 15 nails where three could have done the job. So. We'll see how it works, and uh, here we go. Yeah, the head's up. It's not overdriving them, that's nice. It's definitely a big nail gun. It's a full framing size nail gun, so it might be a little challenging getting it into formwork every now and again. But you definitely don't have to worry about the vibration knocking all your ties loose. All right, let's do the uh, corner reinforcing in the other end.
So we looked at our outside corners, reinforcing those, and also um, the end caps, how we reinforce those with blocks. At the inside corners, you could put another piece of 2x4 across the top of this joint, but basically the forms can't go anywhere at this point. This form here can't push this way because it, number one, has this piece of plywood pushing up against it continuously. It also has this 2x4 whaler pushing up against this 2x4 whaler. So there's really no way for it to go. This piece can't go this way because of this 2x4 whaler. And the only place where it might bow potentially is in between the whalers on this face because it's just pushing up against it. If you have that much pressure in your forms, you're placing your concrete too fast for your formwork system. So if that's a concern, you might need to move your whalers closer together, maybe 12 inch spacing instead of 16 or 10 inch or something like that. So this is kind of inherently self-supporting. There's no real reason to put a bracket there. Some of the other situations that you might run into is on a long continuous wall, obviously, the longest two by four you're gonna get out there is a 20 footer. So chances are you're gonna have splices in your wall. You're gonna make sure that you change where your splices occur and your dog can try and attack you. <laughs> Hi, Penny. Um, you change where your splices occur so they, you don't create a weak spot in your wall. But there are a couple of different ways of doing it. You can try and space your splice out so it occurs at one of your clips, your John brackets, so that it's supported on both sides. Another option is to have it in between two of your jaw brackets and take a long enough splice 2x4 that you can nail it on both sides to support it. And then the other option is to actually, instead of nailing it, if you have um, extra long tie-ins, which are for your whalers, you can actually take this style of jaw bracket um, yeah, I, I can show you. So these are really easy to strip. You just hit that and the eccentric loops over. You can pull them off. So these types of brackets here are the John C because they look like a C. The other type that we've been dealing with are John A's. And, come on. There we go. The A's are because they kind of look like an A profile, kind of. The C's obviously look a little bit like a C profile. So these John C brackets, these can span a splice by attaching um, a couple of these brackets so it spans across your main whaler and then your splice whaler section. Another use for these John C's is when you have your strong backs. And a strong back is basically you've got all your whalers running horizontally or depending on how you build your system, sometimes they can run vertically. But you'll have a strong back which is really useful in that as the wall gets higher and higher you need to keep these individual rows of bracing from kind of snaking around potentially or curving so you'll put double two by four vertical on the back side of these and that helps hold them together so that's referred to as a strong back again depending on how much concrete you're going to place at a time so how much head pressure you need on it um, the type of formwork you're doing the just a bunch of different circumstances will dictate whether you space these out at say four foot, six foot, eight foot. I typically like to go eight foot on center, but that's just me and the rate that I've placed concrete in the past when I designed formwork. To use these John C's to um, affix the strong backs, basically you would pick one of these rows that a John A would normally be installed, and instead of installing the John A brackets, you would install a long and 
um, the snap tie, which basically has another three and a half inch length to it. So I think they're around seven, seven and a quarter inches or so, don't quote me, but I think it's like seven and a quarter inch long. And that would basically allow you to put two two by fours on either side of that snap tie and replace a vertical row with a John C bracket. And they would just sit in here like so. And so you would have that every, you know, six, eight feet. That gives you a nice strong back, keeps your form plumb, well, not plumb, straight, and um, is an easy way of doing it. The only drawback of having the long end snap ties is that they're kind of confusing, especially if you're doing a big wall to be like, okay, one, two, three, four, fifth row goes the long tie, one, two, three, four, fifth row. And so you start putting your form work up and you get your side panels up and you realize that you missed some or you put too many in or something like that. It's really hard to go back later and fix that. So I don't have any of them and I've tried to purchase them through Whitecap in the past and it's always a real pain to try and actually get somebody to order them, which is why I don't have any. Uh, they actually make a tie extender that tie or attaches to the regular button head on these snap ties and extends it out so you can use the John C on a strong back row. You only have one type of snap tie. Those ends go on wherever you need them, wherever you decide to need them, and you can reuse them. So you take them off after the placement and reuse them over and over and over again. So I'd like to get some in the future, but as of now, nobody seems to like to try and purchase them or get them. As far as keeping our wall plumb, again, if I have my strong backs in, I tend to put a turnbuckle or a form aligner or plumber on every six or eight feet. So this is what I refer to as a turnbuckle. It's basically a steel piece of L metal with nail holes pre-punched in it. It's got two sections of coil rod and then a coil rod coupling with left right thread and then a base plate. These are awesome for not just concrete forms but for wall framing. These will push or pull a wall into plumb whether you're racking a wall or just wiggling it in or out. They have a huge capacity. I mean, you can put a lot of hurt on something with one of these if you need to. So the key of it is to, before you attach it, unless you know you really need to pull or you really need to push, try and adjust it so you're kind of mid-span of the adjustment on this screw coil rod. That way you can push or pull as needed. So basically you just take a two by four or whatever length you determine you're gonna need and you take your turnbuckle and I'm just going to use eights just to kind of temporarily do this real quick. Normally I'd probably use 16s just for the increased strength. and you nail your turnbuckle onto your two by four. Then you can take your two by four, attach it to your formwork wherever you need it. Like I said, sometimes I'll attach it to a whaler, sometimes I'll attach it to a strong back. The strong back's kind of my preference because that's affecting the whole wall. You secure the top however you want, whether it's a couple 16 duplexes into it. Some people like to use screws. You can go on the flat. You could cut a bevel up on the top and have it notch in nicely. You could go underneath your whaler to give it a real good push if you're pushing. But you also kind of want to make sure that you can push and pull. Um, like I said, a whaler is nice because I can attach straight into the side and get the shear on the nail and not tension. But I guess you could also, you know, put a block in between and nail it like a stud and then nail it to the side. Bottom end of this. If you're on a uh, concrete deck, you could put some raw pins into the ground, some 16 penny duplex nails with a piece of tie wire. You could use a uh, masonry screw of some sort of bolt. Or if you're out on the dirt and you're kicking out away from your uh, foundation wall footing, you could put a steel stake in the ground and as you're driving it, put a 16 penny through that and drive it all the way down and cinch it down. And that usually does pretty well. That being said, these rebar caps, Typically, once you get these walls one-sided, 
the rod busters will come in, set all their rebar on the inside of the forms, and then you close it up from there. Make sure that they don't pull your ties out of alignment because a lot of times they'll tie their bar onto your ties or set it on top. So when I'm reaching in and I'm moving those ties to close my forms up, a lot of times you don't have as much freedom. Number one, the wall's half as thick because now you have at least a single mat of bar in it, if not two. And uh, you just have more stuff in the way that's locking your ties into place, especially if they tie their uh, bar to your ties. So it's a quick, easy system. It takes a little bit of forethought to plan out how you want to set your forms and how you want to build them. But all in all, it's a really fast system. It uses kind of a minimal amount of two by fours compared to the hairpin style um, plate wedges. It is really fast to disassemble because there's very few nails other than the corners. I mean, you just go through, you hit these and the brackets just pop off. You pull your um, John brackets off the uh, snap tie ends. And you can even go through and break all your snap ties before you even pull your forms off so you're not fighting the snap tie ends with your forms. So yeah, I, I really like this system. It's really convenient. Everything, pretty much everything can be reused multiple times depending on the quality of the lumber and how you treat it and clean it afterwards. And it works for a great variety of wall sizes, thickness, heights, um, other than battered walls where they're tapered or um, angled items where it's like a wedge so it it pretty much works in all those different systems so this is dan with dan and sarah makers hope you enjoyed this video if you've got any questions comments want additional information leave some comments be sure to like these videos give us a thumbs up that makes a huge amount of difference for us and subscribe tell your friends and um, we'll see you next time